Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and more specifically, welcome to the Armory. This is where all weapons from Halo Law will be featured and analysed in detail, and today I've given myself the challenge of making this video as quick as humanly possible. It's only an hour after I set myself this challenge, and I'm already recording the script. Take from that what you will. Anyway, today, we look at the Gorse Cannon. Let's begin. The M68 Asynchronous Linear Induction Motor, more commonly known as the M68 Gorse Cannon, is a weapon that operates on the principles of a mass driver, consisting of one or more coils used as electromagnets in the configuration of a linear motor that accelerate a ferromagnetic or conducting projectile at high velocity. It could be considered as a hypervelocity high-density projectile similar to those of the Magnetic Accelerator Cannon, except on a much larger scale. The weapon is primarily found on the back of certain permutations of the Warthog, and has been known to be on stationary stand emplacements as well, and it stands to reason that with a supply of ammunition, a Spartan could wield one in battle in a similar manner to a chain gun. A terrifying thought, if ever there was one. The M68 is primarily used in anti-vehicle capacity by the United Nations Space Command ground forces, though it can be used to devastating effect against infantry. It is often seen mounted on the back of the Warthog in a similar manner to the M41 light anti-aircraft gun, and while it does not possess the light anti-aircraft gun's extreme rate of fire, it displays near pinpoint accuracy and overwhelming firepower, usually killing infantry targets with a single shot, and heavily damaging those in the immediate vicinity of where the round impacts. Its intended usage is similar to that of the M39 rocket turret, though the rocket turret does not possess the all-round utility and adaptability of the M68, and causes much more collateral damage. The Gorse Cannon measures 119.6 inches or 304 centimeters in length, 55.6 inches or 141 centimeters in width, and 85.8 inches or 218 centimeters in height and weighs 243 pounds or 110 kilograms, putting it solidly in the lifting capacity of most Spartans. The M68 uses an asynchronous linear induction motor to produce a bipolar magnetic field capable of launching a 25 by 130 mm projectile at an incredible speed of just under Mach 40, or approximately 13.7 kilometers per second. The great velocity of the projectile is the key to the stopping power and performance of the Gorse Cannon, giving it exceptional armour penetration at impressive ranges. Presumably, the Gorse Cannon is powered by a mini nuclear fusion reactor similar to the ones known to be carried by Marines. The Gorse Cannon has some heavy energy requirements to accelerate the projectile to the velocities observed, which we'll now investigate at length in regards to the ammunition. The Gorse Cannon fires a 25mm by 130mm armour-piercing limited penetration frangible, or APLP slash F, projectile. This combination of characteristics ensures that the projectile can penetrate armour in a hypervelocity collision, and then almost entirely vaporise on impact to reduce the chances of over-penetration, while also dispersing the now fragmented or frangible ammunition within the intended target, causing maximum damage. This is particularly effective against vehicles having a higher probability of damaging or destroying critical systems within the armoured hull of the vehicle, and this is particularly unsettling when considering its use against armoured personnel. Although the material used for the projectile is never explicitly stated, it stands to reason that tungsten is probably used in combination with some inducting coils, as tungsten seems to be used quite heavily in high-velocity projectiles, as it is also used with the Scorpion main battle tank's turret. Assuming this is the case, I can infer from this some calculations. The mass of a cubic inch or 25 millimeters cubed of tungsten is 0.7 pounds or about 317 grams, while the projectile is 25mm by 130mm. Now, due to the projectile's cylindrical nature, we can factor this into the calculation. The volume of a 25mm cube is 15,625mm cubed, while the volume of a cylinder measuring 25mm by 130mm is 63,813.6mm cubed. This gives a ratio of 4.08 to 1. This ratio allows us to take the mass of a 25mm cube of tungsten at 7 pounds or 317 grams and multiply it by 4.08 to find the mass of a tungsten projectile the same dimensions as the Gorse Cannon's projectile 
making it 2.8 pounds or 1.3 kilograms. From this we can use the mass of the projectile and factor in the velocity to find the kinetic energy of the round being fired, giving us just shy of 122 million joules or around 30.5 kilograms of TNT. Now given that the 50 caliber BMG fired out of a compatible rifle hits with around 16,500 joules, getting hit with a gorse round would be like getting shot by 7,394 50 caliber sniper rifle bullets simultaneously. This makes the gorse cannon absolutely terrifying. When modified, gorse cannons are capable of firing the anvil round, a special kind of ammunition capable of causing an EMP in the target area and doing more damage than standard munitions, but right now I don't even want to consider that. I'll cover all railguns, coilguns, gorse and mac cannons at a later date and cross compare them. Now, If you also bear in mind that this gorse cannon fires 750 rounds from its feed system, has an effective range of 8 kilometers or 5 miles, and can fire 100 rounds per minute, the gorse cannon becomes a significantly formidable threat on the battlefield to anybody on the wrong side of it. The M68 is an extremely accurate weapon useful against most enemy infantry and vehicle units, Unsurprisingly, it is proven to be devastating against light armoured vehicles. It can take out a Type 32 Ghost or a Banshee in one or two shots depending on the shot placement. The weapon is rather effective against wraiths as well, provided the driver can outflank the wraith and fire upon its unprotected backside before it brings its plasma mortar to bear. Firing at the vehicle's armoured front is less effective, but the rate at which the weapon cycles can compensate for this. The M68 is also very deadly if used against infantry, however users should aim at the most dangerous units like Sanghili, General Hane and Malik Golo in order to make full use of the weapon before moving on to smaller, less dangerous targets. Its relatively high rate of fire when compared to other electromagnetic accelerator weapons makes it a devastating precision weapon on any battlefield. Its anti-armor capabilities are second only to those of the SP-42 Cobra's mounted M66 light railgun and static defense platforms such as the Onega, and its portability more than makes up for this. The M68 isn't without its disadvantages, however, mainly the fact that the weapon, like all other vehicle-mounted turrets, offer very little protection to the operator and allows the turret operator to be easily sniped without the presence of a skilled driver performing evasive maneuvers. It lacks precision at extreme distances, but can still hit targets like wraiths and phantoms with a fair degree of accuracy. The gorse cannon can also cause permanent hearing damage when fired within 20 meters of unprotected infantry, meaning there's probably a large population of warthog drivers that are now deaf. The M68 has a significant muscle flash due to the air and fine particles being excited by the hypervelocity projectile to the point of causing them to combust spontaneously. This can give away the user's position to enemy forces. The Gorse Cannon is an excellent vehicle-based weapon that could turn its hand to many different roles on the battlefield from a powerful anti-vehicle weapon to an anti-personnel weapon that can ruin the day of any life form unlucky enough to fall in the line of sight. Due to the weapon's insanely fast muzzle velocity, generally speaking, no matter the distance from the shooter, the target is usually dead before it even realizes it's been hit. It's also pretty perfect for wiping out friendlies in the war games too. Thanks for watching, stick your comments down below, I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons and YouTube members, Neek the Silent Cartographer, Kyle Stevens and Siphonic Storm, my Tier Zero Transcendience, Brian, Sebastian, Red Sea, Darian, Stalk of the Realms, Falcon X003, Alvin, Mr. Fell, Flaming Halo, Starlight, Legions Lost, Josh, the TG7, Cat Herder Cam, Schneidish, Leon, Ignizel and Alpha Therapy, the Holders of the Mantle, my Glorious Reclaimers, my Most Loyal of Metarchs, 
and all the other patrons and members that have jumped aboard to support the channel. Much love to you guys, thanks so much for your support, it's keeping things happening and helping the development of the channel and future awesomeness in a big way. If you like Halo or disgust to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels, including Discord, and if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there, or jumping on as a channel member. It would mean the world to me and afford you loads of great perks and bonuses and helps working towards something pretty awesome I've got planned in the near future. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.